and three, two, one, now. Hi, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. I'm Lewis Lightning. Uh, so yeah, in the last part, we returned to the camp. Uh, we actually got into a conversation right off the get-go with uh, Morgan. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what, if there's anything else to do. I was going to talk to everyone else here, but we already talked to Morgan, so that's out of the way. Um, I want to see what we can do with Bodan. I don't think there's anything I need to do with him, but we'll see. You and your we'll friends see. are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. I'm hoping he's got another backpack. I don't think he gets another one, but we'll see. There's another staff there. Do we have anything to get rid of? We have two Tevinter shields. Uh, we definitely don't need that. Oh, we're fully encumbered. It's a good thing it came here. Um, I want to see what Alistair has. Where's Alistair? Okay. His shield is two tiers down. It's a kite shield. It's got better defense, but more fatigue. The same missile deflection, same strength modifier, and, uh,. Yeah, I prefer this one he's got. I mean, it's kind of the same, except more defense, more fatigue, and those two bonus things. So, I guess I'll get rid of these shields here. And let's see this Mythol's Blessing. So this is just a buckler, so it's smaller. It offers less defense. But the same Mist Deflection. Strength modifier is the same. Again, I'll keep this one. I'm not going to throw it away. But uh, I'm not going to use it either. I'll just put it in my uh, Soldier's Keep place next time I go back there. Soldier's Peak, sorry. Dalish Gloves. Jeez, I should try and put this on people first, actually. That would probably be a better idea than what I'm doing. With the Blood Dragon helmet. I want to get all the Blood Dragon things. There's more Blood Dragon stuff. Um... So I guess I should probably go to my inventory first. I'll just get to sell any gems I might have. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. We need the garnet. Werewolf pelt we can sell. And that's it. Um, let's go to inventory real quick. Let's go to gifts, since we know... There's a couple things we know. Uh... This is an orange silver amulet in the shape of a sword. The silver sword of mercy is has to do with the chantry, and Liliana was in the chantry, so we'll give this to her. Oh, how Plus dear seven. of you! Thank you so much. Also, I, I have a kind of a website pulled up showing me all this stuff, but I, I'm making sure we have reason. I'm not going to give like I know who all these things go to, but I'm not going to just go and do that. I'm going to do it because we know. Uh, things about the character, like also this bronze symbol of Andros State. Well, again, she was in the Chantry, and she like adheres to that and the Andros State, and Andros State. So we'll give her this. Oh, how dear of you! Plus six. Thank you so much. Uh, Chantry amulet, or amulet, however you want to say it. I'll keep that for now. We can up her later, but I can't remember, and I hope someone lets me know. If you've been following this, did we have the conversation? I believe we did about Andraste's grace. Uh, if we did, let me know. But also, we know this ox bone I had. We can give to the dog, which would probably be quicker to go this way. Or it wasn't, but ox bone. And wind likes wine. Who else? Portraits, rune stones, necklace. Nothing else to really worry about. If we go back to uh, Soldier's Peak... Oh, shit. If we go back to Soldier's Peak, I'll drop off some stuff. I forgot to go to Armor. Now, I'm keeping my stuff. That's all good. Shale can't use anything. Did we pick up some better crystals for him, though? No, we didn't. That must have been my other playthrough. I was playing that the other... Well, just a little while ago. So, Dalish Glove, she's got better... Boots, yeah, so she's not going to get anything out of this. But can we switch? She's got both her bows. So let's switch over. We got Win. She's good the way she is. Uh, her staff, though, this is the one we want. 
we're gonna give Oak Branch to uh, Morgan. So when we see here, we'll do that. Uh, Dalish gloves. He's got all leather except for the studded helmet. That'll probably throw him off, I believe. If you look at it, it says, when equipped in a set with basic leather armor and gloves. So then it doesn't matter what his helmet's wearing or what he's got for his helm. And he can't really wear anything else besides the Dalish gloves. There's no reason to break that up. Although we should see his weapons. Asturian's might and this cheese knife. And then he's got the Antivan longbow, which I don't like, but I don't have anything to replace with yet either. Sten's got the chase and flat blade, which I'd like to switch, but we don't have anything to replace it with. And he's got the chase and crusher as well. Uh, let's check his armor here. We can replace his gloves for sure. Uh, although the Dalish gloves aren't that great. And we don't have anything else. Let's just check these Dalish gloves. See how they compare to what he's wearing. They have one armor and less fatigue. Plus more dexterity. So I guess we'll give it to him. Just because it's better. And then we can sell those splint mail gloves. And we get nothing for his helm again. Uh, Hannibal will check out his harness. I believe that's the only thing we got to change with him. The spiked harness is not as good, so we can sell that actually. And then we have Morgan. She needs some better shoes, but we don't have anything. But we do have a better staff for her. Uh, she's got a magic staff, and a dark spawn staff. We'll replace the dark spawn staff for now. I like I, I didn't even have to compare it because I know this dark spawn staff is not as good. Like it's got one spell of power, five spirit damage. Just has ten nature damage. Like even the spell power with the bonus is not as good as this, and it's got better range. Like, it's obvious choice, is the oak branch. And then there was Alistair, who had Oathkeeper and Havard's Agus. I think I already looked at this, didn't I? I didn't want to switch it there. I don't have any better sword for him. Uh, I could give him some different clothes. But I, I like the whole set he's got going with him. And yeah, that's it for now. Let's go talk to the people. I know that was kind of a long waste of time. Ugh. Look, the golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I shall kill for the master and only for the master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another goblin. I have no idea what one might be like or why I wouldn't be like them. Weird got a why quiet there. Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? You seem very animated. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. I agree. Being a golem would be handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Didn't really learn anything about him, but he did like us more out of that. I guess that's a bonus. Um, we don't have a whole lot of runes. I'd love to do some enchanting on my weapons, but we don't have many runes. Let's talk to Sten, though. Yes. Uh, I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Nothing. Very well. We talked about something else he mentioned. Speak, then. Ah. Then I suggest we move on. Yeah, let's go. As you wish. I gotta find something to give him, because he is not talking at all. We need to learn more about something him. Something on your mind? Ask some questions. Of course. You said Earl Eamon raised you. Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Um. I thought you were raised by the Chantry. 
No, let's say it's not what I remember telling you, you telling Flemeth. Well, if you're going to go and pay attention to the facts, then fine, fine. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. So he wasn't your father, but you know who he is. I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. What an awful thing to do to, to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You think the Isle will help us? I think so, yes. This news we've heard about him being sick disturbs me, though. I wonder if we won't discover that Loghain has come to the same conclusion as we have. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. So Alistair proves, but only two. That's not the greatest. Let's talk to Liliana. Something I can help with? Well, I'll talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Well, why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlais ruled. When Orlais was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlais. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlais and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Why did she leave Ferelden then? She had served Cecily, the Lady Cecily, for many years, and was loyal to her. Cecily was a good person. She was always kind to me. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Remember nothing of your mother? I have a feeling Strangely, I already talked to her about this. The only I really remember of Mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlais. But enough about that. Let us move on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I talked to her that, about that already. But I've uh, been playing two, uh, two campaigns back to back. So, she said Andraste's Grace. We have Andraste's Grace. Let's give it to her. Mm, flowers? Oh, thank you. They're very pretty. Smell them. Oh, wait, these are your mother's flowers, aren't they? These were her favorite. Oh, I haven't seen these in such a long time. They <clears throat> smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. Plus 13, and we got more cunning. Woohoo! Let's talk to Wynn, then Zevran, then the dog, and then we're out of here. What's on your mind? Why did the spirit choose to help you? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. 
What about demons? I could sense the demons too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. Do spirits watch people like that? I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. You mean it protected you? There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. And all of a sudden you fight with Petra's demon. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance. And I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. Fighting Darkspawn? I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden, and help prepare him for the task that is yet before him. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. That <laughs> sounds sexual. <laughs> uh, I'll hold you to that promise. You know, I think you'll be all right. Even without my help. Wow, that was a long talk. Uh, now we need Zevran, then the dog. Here I am. Can you answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Tell me a little bit. Of, what is your opinion of the Dalish? I know little enough of the Dalish, other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease, and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All this tale in the book. So you're an assassin and son of a whore? A <laughs> Dalish whore, thank you very much. It was my sole distinction amongst the other elven boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. What does that do with the Dalish? <sighs> my original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. But you don't think of yourself as Dalish? Not at all. I think of myself as Antiva. Still, that did not stop me from running off to join a clan when I drew near Antiva City once. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But, such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. I'd like to bring him with me, but I don't need another rogue, especially one that's not going to help. And he disapproves. Uh, trying to find a way through the earth, are we? Goes back to digging. Alright, have fun then.
All right. So uh, this is where I'm going to cut it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed. I know we didn't really do anything this episode or this part. Why am I? Oh, my autosave was in the other file. Yeah, I know we didn't really do a lot in the, much in this uh, part. But if you enjoyed, leave me a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be going back to uh, Brazilian Forest right away. Okay, thanks. Bye.